Has this ever happened to you? I'm gonna go on the internet. If so, then maybe you could use today's sponsor, NordVPN. There are loads of people out there doing nefarious deeds. <laughs> and thanks to zero data logging and double encryption, you'll stay safe from them, even with up to six connections on a variety of devices. And on top of this, you can make the whole world think you are somewhere that you aren't, which will grant you access to all kinds of things, like exclusively located things. There's all sorts of them. And of course, there's unlimited bandwidth and super fast servers so you can properly enjoy all that exclusive content. It even works in China, and we all know how important that is. And use the code LOCKSTIN with the link in the description to get 70% off and a free month. So protect yourself, and also literally expand your horizons on the internet, because that's the thing you can do. And remember, that coupon code, link below, helps us out, and helps you out. You'll love it. Super Mario 64! Classic 3D platformer that set the standard for what the genre is all about. It's so iconic that everybody forgot about the other 63. But they existed, I swear. But just about every fifth generation game aged worse than Richard Nixon's campaign slogans. Oh. Arguably, though, Mario 64 is one of the rare exceptions. People still play it regularly today, and it's still one of the most popular games in the speedrunning community. Though arguably this has more to do with its programming being made of spaghetti, but I digress. Mario 64 is a beloved classic, famous for showing the world how to properly use an analog stick. So then they ported it to the DS. Ah, yeah. Nicer graphics, bonus stars, bonus levels, several minigames, more characters to play as, and all with a D-pad. How exciting. You don't even start the game playing as Mario. How's that for a curveball? You're Yoshi, and you gotta save Mario, who's trapped in a painting for the 4 elf time. This is awesome. Each character has their own abilities. Yoshi has his tongue and flutter kick. Wario is fat, and Mario is... Well, he's Mario. He's always the best at being the most well-rounded and generic. But the topic of today's video is the new ability that was given to Lo... Lo... Mario's brother. Oh, no! Louie? Louie. Louie can jump higher, and more surprisingly, walk on water. But just like Peter in the Bible, Linguini over here gets scared and sinks after just a short while. <laughs> but he doesn't have this ability because of faith or the Mario universe's equivalent of the biblical gods striking him with such power. I give thee, loose genie, the power of water walking. No, no, no. There is potentially some science to it. I mean, we've got some water walking things in the real world, like the basilisk lizard and others. The basilisk lizard is also known as the Jesus lizard for obvious reasons. This lizard, as you can see, is able to run on water, but it isn't magic, it's wide feet. As it's running across the water, it spreads its feet out. And as it does so, it traps a pocket of air underneath that becomes a firm enough footing for the next step, as the bubble does not want to go under the water. Bubbles rise. So there are plenty of physical forces at play here. It pushes its legs not only back and down, but also out, giving it even more push. But if this lizard were to stop or even just slow down, it would sink. And this takes a lot of energy, so you can't do it for too long, which sounds familiar. Playing as Lamborghini, you can water scuttle until you either stop moving, slow down, or have gone too long, and then you sink. But there's a huge difference between a lizard and an overweight Italian plumber. The lizard is small, and thus it takes less air and power to keep it afloat. And looking at another example, water skitters. They don't actually help our point much because they're also extremely tiny, but these insects can stay on top of water practically infinitely. They do this simply due to water tension and being in a constant state of half a press. Have you ever put drops of water on a coin in school? See how the water piles up instead of just spilling everywhere? That's the half apron. I mean, I mean, that's the water tension. It's a surprisingly strong force until it's not. But okay, these insects are small, so they can just do it. The lizards are a bit bigger, so they can do it like this. But now what happens if we add weight significantly? A little more. A little more. There you go. Mamma mia. But now, I'd like to show you a very niche sport, liquid mountaineering. Apparently, with shoes designed for this in mind, with cups to hold pockets of air, as well as a hydrophobic coating which repels liquid, and by just running real fast, keeping your feet on the water as little as possible, and maintaining a down, back, and out motion, similar to the basilisk lizard, you can push yourself out onto the water surface for a few steps, similar to Lee. Now, you could argue with the fact that the Mythbusters tackled this video and proved it false using this guy, but 
many of those who defend this video point out that he isn't doing it right. You have to go at an angle, feet more outwards while wearing a hydrophobic cup shoe and more. And, well, those people are dumb because the very creators of this video have also come out and said it was all a hoax. Multiple times even, because people didn't believe that they would hoax it up. Uh, because you see, they were forced by the US government to claim it was fake because if the public knew about this, it might shatter their faith in our blessed by God America. But, but, but no, there really is no scientific way to walk on water like this without a magical force. And side note, sort of, the Mythbusters have also tested many myths about ninja shoes that allowed them to walk on water, and they proved that they were incredibly difficult and near impossible to use. But I mean, these are two middle-aged men, not people who trained their whole lives for a moment such as this. But then again, most ninjas weren't people who trained their whole lives for moments such as that. That's a very fantasy fictionalizationized version of ninjas. Most ninjas were just farmers that were fed up with the government. But still, it's plausible that shoes similar to this could have been used with enough balance, though due to the sound they would make and how long it would take to get across something, there's no way it'd fit into the typical ninja stealth tactic. But regardless, Lofty doesn't wear wide water shoes, so he couldn't be using this method. He is too heavy to use surface tension, he can't use hydrophobic running shoes, so what's left? Changing the water, perhaps? I know that by adding cornstarch to water, you raise the water's surface tension and its solidity, and add enough and you get oobleck. When force is quickly applied to oobleck, it solidifies just long enough for you to take a few steps, as seen here. So, Lazuli has cornstarch on the bottom of his shoes? but only enough to do this until it's all used up? Then some fancy magical shoe reloading refills it? I guess, possibly, but I think there's something else going on with these shoes, and we first have to look at how they work on land to figure that out. So aside from jumping higher and actually having a personality, what is another major difference between Mario and Lugie? He's a lot more slippery. His jumping isn't quite as controllable, and neither is his running, and especially stopping. You stop, he slides. This effect is especially applied in Smash Brothers, but he's not too different from Mario size-wise, so why does he slide around so much? It has to be something about his shoes. And considering that we definitely need some level of Mario magic to explain this, perhaps we can find the answer in a freezing mechanism. Or just straight up a coating made of ice flour. You've seen how fast ice flour blasts are able to just freeze things, right? Now apply that power to the bottom of his shoes. When running on water, it partially freezes the water under his feet just long enough to walk across, but thin enough to where you don't really notice it thanks to the low-res graphics. And it does this just until the device gets too overwhelmed by this process and has to stop, like it overheats perhaps, but it's too warm for the ice to properly work. And that's why, towards the end of the running, he slows down. He needs to take smaller steps to make up for the not-as-solid water. And obviously, having ice constantly on the bottom of your shoes would absolutely cause you to slide around more. Meaning, Luigi has to for sure be a master of balance. Oh right, that's his name, Luigi. And there you have it. A still very unrealistic answer, but it works in universe fine. But what do you think? Let me know down below, and I hope you enjoyed this remake of one of our oldest videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, you never stop using your noggin. Not, 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 not,